Camera set, background! Man moving, background. And action! Since I was a kid and I saw Kurosara's Ran on, and Kurosara's Rashomon, the idea of like outdoor spaces with very formalistic movements and framing really intrigued me. And I wondered what that would be like in a really amorphous space like a beach. It's just no, no angles, so we add all the angles with our movements. Uh, and I really enjoyed that experience. It was almost like theater, because I'm, I'm, I'm making it structured in a very structuralist place. You know, I have a very formalistic way of telling stories. I uh, write everything, and then I storyboard everything out, and I see the images really clearly. Uh, and, and that can be very confining and restrictive. But what I love is actors that messy all that up, raw actors, theater-trained actors that can be loose within a framework. We have uh, a restraint and limitations. We have to go into that kind of journey to work around it, to understand it, to even incorporate it. It's a really interesting challenge for an actor because it's both confined to a frame that he's chosen, um, a position that he's chosen, and then within that, he allows so much freedom. And it's been fascinating to be in a movie that basically has no coverage. We shoot over and over again until it settles in for night. But the only way that really works is if you are genuinely present. And so it's dangerous and beautiful. And they felt that. They would go home every night, and there'd be this high because we do this incredibly complex thing that took two hours to do, and there's two valid takes. That's it. Wow, that was like we were in, on stage. That was beautiful. Is this how it's gonna be every day? They were loving that high that came from the danger of like, I don't know why I reacted to you that way. Everyone is there in one location, together at the same time, supporting each other as actors, supporting each other as characters. And again, that reminds me of being in the theater. So for me, this is familiar territory, only this time it's on film. I want you to be feeling scared and dangerous like on theater. And when you go on theater, you can't think your way on stage. You just go with the intention and then the first word comes out in the play and it's angry. Well, that's the note today and everyone has to react to that for the rest of the play. Just keep on going in that direction. We come to the set and I'm used to, you know, the master, the medium shot, the reverse, you know, the close up, the reverse. And he doesn't do anything like that. It's as though the outlines of the picture are clear. And we bring ourselves to fill in the outline because he knows exactly what it is he wants. And cut. Beautiful take. We'll print that one. Night sees there's hunters and there are gatherers. And he's a hunter where he knows what he wants because he spent so much time with the script and every single line he included was intentional and He's precise about what he's precise about. You know, he's very precise about his words that he wrote. He's very precise about where the camera's going. What I try to tell the actors and the crew members, if we're doing it correctly, we cannot duplicate it. It should be just us at that moment in time, who we were at that moment, at that very moment. That was it. We could never redo it ever again. It's very specific. It's very, like, highly intense and emotional, and we're doing things in a very unique and precise way. And I think that's because uh, at least what I'm observing of my dad is that he's a true auteur. I don't shy away from darker or provocative things because what I keep trying to do as I write is to imagine the very worst things and would I survive that as a human being emotionally. When I come back out on the other side, can I be stronger for that experience? I don't ever think I make horror, ever. That's not what I ever would describe what I do. Um, it's very dark. It's, you know, very disturbing and dark, but it's not horror. Horror has an almost sense like that's the destination, but this is meant to go through and come out on the other side with a belief system stronger for it. And cut. The collaboration process on this movie has been different to any other. Because Knight wrote this movie, and he's directing this movie, he's a producer, he's a writer, he's gonna have a cameo in this film, he's all over it. So that's reassuring, because you feel like you have this nucleus of reassurance and intelligence. Whatever you need to know, any questions you have about the film, Knight can 100% answer those. 
I had a style in my head for the movie, which was to use angular movements, not straight, so the camera wouldn't come to you, but would be on a, like an angle as we're getting closer, but we're not going right at you. That was to create kind of shapes in an amorphous space on a beach. What ends up happening is that you have a painting at the front, and then you do this angular thing, and there's a second painting at the end of the movement, and the characters, the hope was like they would be in a configuration, and then as they get to the thing, another painting would, would emerge. They're changing. That was one aspect. The other cinematic value we were using is that the camera would move independently of the events that they're recording. So that would represent, that movement would represent time. So time's moving whether you're having an epiphany or you're crying or you figured it out, it's just gonna move like this. And whether you have that epiphany on camera, whatever, it's just gonna happen. And we go on to the next, I may get only the reaction to what you say. I may even, I may miss it entirely. And the audience can feel that the camera is just moving irregardless of what the script is doing. And that represents time and that constant uh, uh, implacable movement of time through the piece. So we had a shot where the, the, we had the big this rig where the camera comes down as they all are gathering to talk about what to do, and then it, and then it turns and then it becomes a, a shot that just spirals around all their faces. But we were going to do it without regard to the dialogue. So almost almost no lines were on camera. Like I say half the lines were not on camera and big important epiphany lines just weren't on camera, but you were seeing, sometimes you're seeing an empty space between the, the characters, and sometimes you're seeing their, uh, a reaction from a random character that's there. There's a beauty and you lean in and you, you get that, this pressure of time as they're, they're running out of time, they're running out of time, figure this out, figure this out, and then it's getting, whatever's happening off camera in that particular scene, something is physically happening to one of the characters and it keeps spinning and spinning, and then it ends up with her then we meet her at the end and the, and the collapse happens. And so it's high risk, it's you know, a minute and a half, it's you know, all of that and everybody has to be working. But that's the theater uh, performance stuff that I really love. It's hard to even see it as highly choreographed because I think if, it's, if everything is really working, it doesn't feel highly choreographed. Instead it feels like this is now what you're doing. I'm telling you, it allows an actor to just be an actor. I'm not thinking about what are the mechanics, what does this need to look like, what is the movement of any, I just, and I trust him, believe me, his microscopic eye is seeing the minutia of anything that isn't right. And he'll stop you and go, no, we're gonna go back to the beginning. So often I will push myself to extremes because if I go further than is comfortable, on the way down from that, I'll hit upon something relaxed, which is at a higher pitch than I would have. It's a risky game because it's a matter of trusting them not to use the takes when you make an idiot of yourself. I have to give a lot of trust tonight that he knows what he wants, he knows what's going to work, and he knows what it'll look like. I have to surrender to that and go, he knows, he knows what's going to be good, he knows what's going to look good, so I trust completely in him. Action. The casting process is a, is a kind of a, a sacred thing, and it has to represent where I am. And where I am right now is celebrating the fact that I'm an immigrant, and I just kind of quietly took that, you know, and put that aside, I think, my whole career, that I make movies in, in the United States. I was born in Pondicherry, India. My parents are full-blown, you know, Indian, and speak the language, and have the culture from India, and I've been lucky enough to tell stories to everyone around the world and, you know, do it from Hollywood, but I am an immigrant. We're doing it with immigrant leads that, that have accents, a Mexican accent and, an, and a German accent and, you know, and an English accent. And it just represents the world. And uh, I love that. I, I love that about it. It represents where I am. And cut. Aww. Thank you.